Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the Razer Death Adder 2013 edition. Now something I noticed about the Death Adder 2013 is that it doesn't say 2013 anywhere on the box at all. In fact, the only hint that this isn't a normal Death Adder other than the packaging change, and if you look really closely at the specs, is Razer's marketing blurb here where they say, how did we improve on perfection <clears throat> very carefully? We didn't want to fix anything that wasn't broken and so we literally didn't change anything. Okay. We focused instead on enhancing and optimizing the Death Adder, utilizing next generation technologies and further ergonomic tweaks. Okay, so did they not change anything? Did they change stuff? They did change stuff. So let's go ahead and get this baby opened up. They went from a 3.5G sensor to a 4G sensor, so they've increased the effective DPI. And while the Death Adder has been and still is an optical gaming mouse as opposed to a laser gaming mouse, and yes, I know laser is technically an optical technology, but that's not what most people mean when they say it, they have, they have still achieved a 6,400 DPI uh, range for this particular mouse, which is very high for an optical mouse. So let's go ahead and open it up. Now they did allude to some ergonomics tweaks, and so in addition to adding an upgraded sensor, they have also made some slight changes to the shape of the mouse, which does retain its right-handed grip. So you can see here, this is not an ambidextrous, ambidextrous mouse. All right, so we made a bit of a change to our tabletop here so that you guys can really clearly see what Razer's changed about the Death Adder 2013. So it is still a right-handed shape, but you can see it's more subtle than many right-handed mice. So there's an indentation on this side. You can see the, 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 the more pronounced curve there. And then when you flip around to the other side, you can see that it is a much less pronounced curve and actually comes out a little bit. So while a lefty could put their hand on the mouse, the, 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 their index finger would sit too low and their middle finger would sit too high and it wouldn't quite be comfortable. It is shaped for the right-handed player. Now I have sort of small-ish hands, especially for a male, but I can palm this thing perfectly and then I have probably a little bit of, uh, it looks like about a centimeter of space left where even if my fingers were bigger or if I curved my fingers a little bit, I could have significantly larger hands while being able to palm the mouse comfortably. Now we've encountered gaming mice that are a palm grip type mouse, but that are so small that you end up clawing them unless you have little tiny little kid hands. So that is not the case with the Death Adder 2013. Now an improvement that they have made that I think is huge is the addition of these rubber grips on the side. So that is an extremely grippy rubber. I don't know how to make that point on film without uh, just kind of saying it. Guys, it's awesome. It has a nice texture to it so that you can, you, just by touching it lightly, you'll be able to pick up the mouse without almost no effort, no, by not exerting almost any pressure on the mouse from the side at all. This is great because it frees you up to have your mouse hand very relaxed and your wrist relaxed, not causing any additional tension here, but still being able to lift when you get to the edge of the mouse pad. And there's another one on the thumb side as well. So you can see that the way that they're shaped is optimized for the fingers that are intended to be pointed at them. So this one's a little bit lower, a little bit lower profile for the pinky. And this one's a little bit higher profile with uh, more of an, a curve in for the way that your thumb would be positioned. Now, Razer calls the buttons on this mouse hyper response buttons, and I don't know if I would call the mouse wheel click particularly hyper responsive, nor would I call the front and back clicks particularly hyper responsive because they feel like normal buttons to me. But the left and the right click feel like they're on a hair trigger, so I would say yes. Those are definitely hyper responsive, optimized for extremely fast button presses with almost no effort whatsoever. So what makes it optimized for programming? What's the difference between a pro level product and, and a consumer grade product? A lot of the time it's, well, how many times is a pro gonna be pressing the button versus how many times is the typical consumer gonna be pressing the button? So I'm booting up a computer so that I can show you guys the lighting effects, but I wanna show you the bottom of the mouse as well. So they've got uh, what they're calling their uh, ultra slick mouse feet, so you can see there's one up at the top left, one up at the top right, and then another one down at the very bottom. So Razer doesn't give you any particular rating for how long these are supposed to last, but it should be noted, guys, that it actually doesn't matter if it was a huge surface area along the bottom of the mouse or a small one, the coefficient of friction would actually be the same. Here's the 4G infrared sensor, so precision 6400 DPI. Many people don't use DPIs um, above sort of the, the, the lower ranges, but having the flexibility to be able to turn up your DPI and lower your mouse sensitivity and turn off acceleration allows you to really tune the mouse to use it the way that you want to use it. So here's the here's what the lighting effects looks like. So you've got your illuminated scroll wheel, just like that. 
Okay, you've got your illuminated razor logo right here, which apparently turned itself off. Ah, there we go. So you can configure it within Synapse 2.0. The 2013 edition does work with Synapse 2.0, which takes all of your gaming profiles and stores them in the cloud so you can use them wherever you happen to be as long as you log in it'll store your profiles on a per game basis so you can map your uh, you can map your commands however it is that you want to do that i want to just make sure i didn't really miss anything here okay it does support thousand hertz ultra pulling which is good um, uh, many gaming mice do that it does support on the fly sensitivity adjustments and i think that pretty much covers it for what they had to say for themselves on the box itself. I guess the last thing is just to show you that it is using a nice high quality braided cable. So hopefully now that we've switched to a white tabletop, you guys are gonna be able to see that all right. And thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the Razer Death Adder 2013, which they didn't change anything about, but they did, but they, I don't know, whatever. So looks to me like the, the things they changed are good. Oh, of note, now that I've actually got the product out of the box, because I had to look at it before it was out of the box, it does say 2013 somewhere. So there it is. 2013 is on the mouse itself, even though it wasn't on the outside of the box. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.